Good morning all. Here is a photo eye and it was damaged when the belt sander uh, cut into this corner right here. And if you can see it down inside there's an IC that we are going to have to replace and repair the traces of it looks like pins one and two. We'll have to pull this cover right here to get a good look at it. But it looks like pins one and two of that IC have been cut away by the sanding belt. And I see some traces that have been cut. Let's get this cover off right here and we'll get a better look at it. go let's get the camera a little bit closer and you'll be able to see the damage that was done by that sanding belt when it cut into the case in the board there's the damage so these first two pins of what looks like a 74 HC 00 that's a quad 2 input NAND gate the first two pins have been cut. These two traces right here, they've been cut. You can see they run off in that direction right there, probably to pins one and two. After we get this uh, IC removed from the board, we'll be able to see, we'll be able to have a better idea of where these traces go to. Now this IC is going to have to be replaced and the traces reconnected to pins one and two. We'll have to draw the circuit out a little bit to see where pins one and two go. I have enough of these two traces curled up right here to where I can get my meter on there and see where they go. They looks like they run off into this IC right here. And that looks like an HEF4013. Okay. First thing we'll do is get this IC removed from that from that board. We're going to use magic solder to remove that IC. We're going to use chip quick. And this is for surface mount removal. That's some really good stuff right there. That, that eases. Makes it so easy to get ICs off of surface mount ICs and hard to get parts off of a board. So we apply some flux to the pins of the IC. Next, we apply chip quick to the pins my squeezer so I can lift that off the board there we go just released Set that to the side there. Now grab our solder wick and apply some flux to the solder wick. Now we can soak up the chip quick. And afterwards, We'll clean up the board 
so we can see where all of these traces go. The hardest part's going to be the trace repair. Let's get some denatured alcohol. Take some denatured alcohol and clean away that flux. the IC out of the way I'll be able to draw a circuit out to verify where these traces go. Now it won't bother you or you'll have to watch me draw this circuit out. <laughs> I'll do it off camera and then I'll show you the results. It's, uh, it's kind of boring watching somebody draw a circuit. You've seen me draw circuits before. And uh, it, it, it takes a little bit of a patience to stand there and, and watch me draw this stuff out. There we go. I think we got... Uh, let me set that denatured alcohol off to the side. I'll work the circuit out and in just a little bit I'll come back and show you the drawings and then we'll perform the miracle of repair <laughs> if you've ever done trace repair it's uh it's it, it is very tedious it is tedious work so here let's get to drawing I'll be back in a little bit Here's a partial drawing of the circuit. I don't have the inputs to the HEF4013BT. That's a dual D flip-flop. But I don't have those inputs drawn out. I was only worried about finding where these traces go to pins 1 and 2 of uh, the 74HC00. These two pins right here and the traces were cut. I went ahead and drew the final destination here. The output of this circuit turns on this transistor, this NPN transistor, that turns on the optocoupler. Now I couldn't find a data sheet on that optocoupler. It's got an odd part number right there. The same with this either inverter or buffer. I could not find a data sheet for that. But here's the marking code 7S86J. And here's the pinouts that I could make out on that surface mount device. When the transistor is turned on from this circuit, current flows through the LED emitting photons through the collector emitter junction to ground. The photons are emitted into the photo transistor of this optocoupler. And the final stage is connected to looks like wiring. So we have input and output. Now the very first thing I want to do is install a new 74HC00 and then we will connect pin 1 of this stand gate to pin 2 of the D flip-flop and then we'll connect pin 2 of the NAND gate to pin 12 of the flip-flop and hopefully um, if all goes well We'll perform a test to make sure that that unit is still functional. Well, how easy this is going to be. But let's set 
anchor point right there so we can get the IC started. Alright. Don't get in the way, people. I'll try not to. <laughs> this is going to be rough. Okay, here we go. No turning back now. solder the pins on the other side with that plastic housing in the way okay there's this side let me get turned around and maybe I can sneak in there from the other direction I think I can get in there Try not to burn that plastic housing. solder keeps wanting to go around the corner. Got to straighten it out every now and then. Okay. That takes care of the mounting the IC. Now for the fun part. <laughs> Trying to get uh, pins one and two uh, connected to their respective IC pins on that HEF 4013. I'm going to use wire wrap wire to perform that connection. And that's going to be a bear because look how small those pins are. Whee! <laughs> now you thought soldering that surface mount IC to the board there was the tough part. Wait till you see what's coming up. <laughs> oh, the things we do around here. Well, hopefully we can resurrect this one from the dead. We'll see. We'll see. Now for the fun part. <laughs> okay, where's my solder? Come here, solder. In these two pins here first. Okay, that's pins one and two. We have some solder applied to them. Now, let's add a little bit of solder to pins two and twelve. Careful. Okay. Let's turn this around. Now we'll get pin 
12. Fourteen, thirteen, twelve. Jeweler's glasses on. Let me find those. What did I do with those? Uh, where are you? Where are you? There you are. Okay. Let's tack those onto my surface mount glasses. We'll be able to see really well. Got to get up close to these pins when you're trying to solder onto them. Got my wire strippers here. I hope the camera stays in the frame. Wire. Ah, I guess the pliers. There we go. Is that going to be good enough? I think so. We'll see. Okay, let's add a little bit of solder to the wire. Okay, that wire is tinned. side tin. Hope I didn't cut that too short, but we'll see. Okay. Let's go on to pin two first. Then we'll work it around. I think that'll be a little bit easier. way so we can attach pin 2 to pin 12. This is going to be the fun part right here going around the corner. It looks like looks like I'll be able to do it. Trying to fix you. Oh, 
Okay, dang. No! It broke free. Let's try it again. Okay, it took that time, I think. Let me see. shiny as I'd like it to be. Let me add a little bit more solder to that connection right there. Okay, don't, don't come undone. There we go. Ah, uh, yeah, I like that better. That's better. Yes, that's better. Okay, one more wire. One more wire. solder over here off the off the, uh, off the camera adding solder to the connection of wire right there is long it's going to go from pin one of the 74HC00 to pin two of the HEF4013 I'm going to come over the top of this HEF4013 I think it will be, will be a little bit easier when we go back in the plastic housing, these wires don't get ripped out. So let's try it here. See how this works out. Okay. There's pin two. On the HEF4013, now we got to go to pin 1 of the 74HC00. Uh -oh. Get around the corner there. Looks like it. <laughs> okay, it ain't gonna be pretty, but it's if all else is well, it should work. I 
just should hold that one right there instead of trying to go with the tweezers and picks. If I can just hold on to it. Right there. And a little bit of solder to this tip. Okay, did I get it? Now, uh, it's too close to the other wire. Let me get it off of there. There we go. Okay, we got it. Straighten out our work here. Okay, one to two, two to twelve. Whew. That was a grizzly bear. Hello all, here we are day two, I hope y'all staying warm, we're trying, <laughs> but we're going to test our repair from yesterday, here we are uh, on day two of this repair, uh, we're going to test the photo eye, uh, this power supply right here is going to provide 15 volts DC and ground, 15 volts DC to the brown wire and ground to the blue wire to power up the logic of this photo eye. This power supply up here is the source for the LED current sense resistor and the output side of the optocoupler. So let's fire it up, see what we get. Let's block the photo eye. Right now the LED is off. We'll get closer in just a little bit. I'm blocking the photo eye. And the LED turned on. Let's unblock. The LED turned off. Blocked. LED on. Unblocked. LED off. Isn't that amazing? So it looks like our repair from yesterday is working. Let me turn this off and uh, let's get closer to the circuit so we can see that LED turn on and off when we block that photo off and unblock it. The photo eye is unblocked and the LED is off. Then we just block the photo eye. And the LED turned on. Unblocked, LED off. Blocked, LED on. <laughs> That's a fun circuit to play with. I'm using a loop. 10 times loop to uh, block that LED. Well, can we block it? Can we block it with something else? Let's try a piece of static foam. Blocked? Unblocked. Blocked? Unblocked. That's a fun circuit to play with. I'm glad we was able to repair it. 
I had my doubts here for a little while because the sandpaper cut through this area right here and we had to replace that IC and run the traces from pins 1 and 2 over to the HEF4013 dual D flip flop. Here's the optocoupler, that's the final output stage on this side going to the uh, black and white wire. Here's that little buffer I see that's driving into the NPN transistor that's turning off and on the input side, the input LED of the optocoupler. It's a neat little circuit. There's a lot going on over here. This side is the transmitter, the IR transmitter. This side is the IR receiver, the side that we had to repair. There's a lot of surface mount resistors, capacitors, diodes on both sides. This little section right here is the power supply. It takes our plus 15 volt DC input and converts it to 5 volts DC for the logic. Well, I'm ready to put this thing back together and send it back to the machine it belongs in. Folks, I hope you're staying warm out there. Be careful. That cold will catch up to you in a heartbeat. We'll see you when the sun comes up. Have a good day. Good evening all. It's getting dark outside. We probably got like 10 minutes of light left. <laughs> I got the little light bulb above our head right here, so it might be kind of dark. But here's our drawing right here of the circuit, the output of the HEF4013 driving into the NAND gate, the 74HC00s. Uh, I'd like to make an amendment here and here, but I'd like to state that previously in the video I had this drawn as a buffer. It is actually an inverter. Uh, I put my oscilloscope right here and when this input was low at ground potential, the output of this inverter was high and when I had a high here 5 volts in I had a low out here so I put a little bubble out here at the end another thing this optocoupler it's not a transistor it's not a phototransistor output this is actually a solid state relay and I'll put the uh, PDF of what you could replace this solid state relay with. Uh, it's part number and manufacturer. I'll put that up at the end of the video if you ever have to replace uh, that solid state relay. Has LED input and solid state relay output on six, pin six and four. Here's the logic states of when the photo eye is blocked and not blocked. Now, these are the outputs of the HEF4013. And when these two outputs, Q1 bar and Q2 bar, are low, then these two outputs of the HEF4013 are high. That's Q1 and Q2. Q1 bar is the complement of Q1, and Q2 bar is the complement of Q2. So when the photo eye is not blocked, these two outputs are low, and these two outputs are high. And we have two outputs that are low, the output of that NAND gate is high going into pin 12. 
when we have the two outputs of the HEF4013 down here, when the photo eye is not blocked, we have a high and a high that makes pin 6 low. Now, this NAND gate, not blocked, 12 and 13 are high. All of these states I viewed with the oscilloscope. So we have a high and a high, then we have a low. So we have a low and a low, then we have a high. <laughs> and that high is inverted. We have a high here and a low here, so the NPN transistor is turned off. And the LED inside that solid state relay will be off. Now when the photo eye is blocked, the opposite occurs. We have a high and a high here, and a low and a low here. The outputs of the HEF4013. So here we have a high and a high, and a low there. And we have a low and a low, and a high here. So when we have a low and a low here, we have a high and a high here. And that makes a low into this inverter. So we have a low here and a high here. At which time that NPN transistor is driven into conduction. And now current flows through that LED inside that solid state relay to ground through the NPN transistor being turned on by this high right here on the output of that inverter. Here is the DC input to power up that photo eye. Now I applied plus 15 volts DC up here and ground up here and this bridge rectifier corrects the polarity so if I put ground up here and plus 15 volts down here it would still be positive DC right here and ground right here now we don't want to get above that 35 volt cap uh, electrolytic capacitor and that's why I put plus 15 volts and ground in here so that I did not exceed that 35 volts DC rating of that electrolytic capacitor. Now the output of the solid state relay is on pin 6 and pin 4. Uh, we have a 0 ohm resistor right here. That was just to jump across the trace and uh, make connection from this side of the TVS marking code MX to that side of the, of the TVS. Uh, this is a TVS transient voltage suppressor. And the load out here uh, for the solid state relay, I used an LED and a current limiting resistor. Here's our test setup to test that photo eye, part number FC3-A. I applied plus 15 volts DC to the brown wire and ground to the blue wire, this from an external power supply, to power up the logic within that photo eye. Here on the black wire, I applied 12 volts DC, and this is the solid state relay in here, and the white wire to the anode of this green LED the cathode of the green LED going through a 560 ohm resistor to ground. This 12 volts DC and ground are from a second external DC power supply. When the photo eye is not blocked, this LED was turned off because the solid state relay was turned off. When the photo eye was blocked, this solid state relay turned on, connecting the 12 volts DC to the anode of the green LED. 
current flowing through the black wire, the solid state relay, the white wire, and then to our green LED anode cathode junction 560 ohm resistor to ground. That external 12 volts DC is ground. Emitting photons and turning on that green LED. Well, isn't that amazing? <laughs> the sun has fully gone down. All right, all. I think I got everything. I'm usually pretty good about missing something here or there, but I think I got it all this time. Um, sun's gone down. And my belly's hollering at me. I'm a tad bit hungry. So I'm going to have to go cook some dinner. And uh, I'm a pretty good cook over the years. I've figured out how to cook things. So I hope you all have too. Cook a good dinner for your family. They'd enjoy it. It's not that hard. It's a lot harder than getting up and going to work than then uh, cooking, cooking's easy. <laughs> oh, shoot fire, I'm running on here. Uh, every now and then I gotta have somebody to talk to and y'all's it. <laughs> okay, we'll see you when the sun comes up. <laughs> oh yeah, good night all. Thank you.